Now we're going to look at mechanically driving a pendulum. We're going to make it move by using a motor. This being a string, the only forces on this bob here are gravity and tension in the direction of the string. So we can force it to oscillate by moving that pivot point back and forth, thus changing the direction that the string is facing. If that pivot oscillates at the pendulum's natural frequency, then the pendulum will be pulled further and further each oscillation. So even if our mechanical oscillator only moves a tiny bit each time, the amplitude of oscillation can grow arbitrarily large. A similar but more complicated form of driving can occur if the pivot point is driven vertically rather than horizontally. If the pivot is lifted when the pendulum is at the bottom of its swing and then lowered when it's at the apex, we get a motion similar to when a person is on a swing set in which we add a small bit of potential energy each swing and slowly build up more energy over each oscillation. Since we pull directly along the string perpendicular to the direction of motion, we're not actually adding any kinetic energy when we pull the bob up. However, when we release back down, we are imparting some of that potential energy back into it. Since it works on a slightly different principle than being horizontally driven, we don't get quite the same growth of amplitude with vertically driven pendulum. One of the more well-known behaviors of pendula is that they fall down. Obviously, everything falls down. Lift something up, gravity takes it back down. So naturally, if you turn a pendulum upside down, it'll fall. Unless you drive it at the right frequency. Kapitz's pendulum is an inverted pendulum whose stable equilibrium is upright. And it's only driven vertically.